everybody, it's Leah. Um, I'm really excited for this next installment of the Make This With Me Tim Holtz mini folio tutorial. Um, I first want to apologize. I feel like I was a little bit of a crank <laughs> during my last video. I was so tired and I was like, make sure you do this because So I just want to apologize. I am in a much uh, happier mood today. So hopefully that shows in my tutorial. Um, so let's talk about what you should still have from the last video. We have a, our um, he bag handles. Um, you don't need more than two. I just happen to have all four of mine because we did two bags, uh, three. No, we did three bags. <laughs> well, yeah, we did three bags. Um, but I still have two two sets of handles just in case I needed it. But I don't believe that we're going to use more than one set. Your folio, which by now should have uh, this insert made on the left with the flap and the folders. And um, again, we're going to make a closure for this, but that's not today. Um, and that's it. Nothing should be in the back because we haven't gotten that far. We have our three pages from our last tutorial, which were made from a paper bag, an envelope, a, two cards, one we cut down to make sure that it didn't come too far uh, down in the album, that it fit nicely in the pocket that we made here. Okay, and then there's the second pocket that we did. Um, and if you have these inserts um, from the snap pages, we added snap page or whatever brands, you know, of these uh, pocket page album pages, the smaller ones. Okay, a six by eight. And then we, and then the back side of our bag. And that's it. And we should have three of these pages. And if you have um, some kind of pocket that um, came with any of these kits, or if you have one laying around from an old uh, binder, or if you managed to stop at, say, like a Staples or something and pick one up, we'll also be using one of these. But if you wanted to, there's lots of tutorials online on how to make a pocket like this, um, whether you do it out of plastic or you do it out of paper. Okay, um, but today's part that we're going to work on is the binding. Now, this is the binding that came, oh, let, me, let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. This is the binding that came with your folio. It is three pieces of paper that are the same size. They're stacked together. They're spread out by a um, so that there's a half inches this way. And then obviously there's the, they get bigger as you go this way since they're lined up in the short edge. And it's sewn along here. Okay, we are going to turn this into what's called a stack the deck binding. Um, oops, sorry, I'm just going to adjust the light a little bit. Um, no, you know what, a little brighter. I think it was really dark last time. Sorry. <laughs> okay, um, the stack the deck binding was, from what I remember, created by Laura Dennison from Follow the Paper Trail. She has been on YouTube for quite a while. She's got a really great following. Her tutorials are fantastic. Her um, mini albums are really cool. And um, the, she shows a tutorial for how to make the, the stack the deck binding from scratch on her page. We are going to use this the way it already is to make our binding. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get our scoreboard out and a pencil. So this is what you need so far. And then later in the video, we're going to put this thing into our book. And then we're going to attach three of the pages that we've already made to the um, binding. Okay, so... Now we have these, you're gonna have the seam and then the three small um, tabs on the left, okay? What the stack the deck binding does is creates like these little bits of like, it should be three or more, pay, two or more really. And what you do is you stack, you cut a piece, let's do like this, right? And you would fold it like this and then you'd figure out what your gusset size is and then you'd, and then you'd score it again. And then you take this piece and glue it onto a piece where you've made it even wider so that you have scoring on the, so that you have a gusset here. And then you'd stick another one on top of another one on top of another one. And so what it does is it creates tabs with gussets so you can attach your book or your binding um, to uh, your pages to your book. OK, so how we're going to do this is we're going to make quarter inch gussets. So starting with the seam on the left side and the three tabs on the left, we are going to measure, uh -huh, where's my ruler? Okay, we are gonna line this up at zero, however you wanna do it. If you have a, um, let me zoom in. If you have, 
Oh, I almost lost my ruler. <laughs> I'm doing good. Um, if you have a ruler, you can use a ruler. I'm going to use my board. Um, and what we're going to do is you're going to make a mark at one quarter inch. Because we're going to do ours with a quarter inch gusset. You can do an eighth inch gusset. You could do, should I get closer? I think that's the closest I can get. I'm going to make it a little brighter. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm having like lighting issues today. Is that better? Okay. So, ooh, no, no. No, we're not speeding up right. Am I good? Okay. All right. So, you're going to make a mark at a quarter inch. Then you're going to flip this over, place this at a quarter inch, and make your mark at zero. Okay? So, now we have a mark here and a mark here. That is where you're going to make your first score line, okay? Um, you know what? You can use a, a score a score like this. This is a board, but I think it would make the score too deep in the page. I'm going to use my bone folder and my ruler. If I can find what I do with it. I am going to line up. Am I centered still? Sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm going to line up. my markings and my ruler. I'm like not doing great today, guys. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, you're gonna line your ruler up. Give yourself just a little bit of space so you have room to score. Okay, you take my folder. And I'm going to score along my mark. Okay, that is going to be my first line. We're going to fold back on the line. Burnish. And now we are going to take... Why does this look straight? Oh, they didn't really glue this on too straight. That's okay, we'll fix that later. Okay, you are going to now glue down, because remember, stacking the deck is about gluing each of these down when they're like this. Okay, so you can see how we're starting to form the first of the deck. Okay, we're gonna take our glue. This is something you have to do with wet glue, guys. You can't really, um, I don't think this really works if you do it with like a tape, because you can't get the tape gun behind it. Um, you're free to build your own stack the deck binding, but I mean, this is already here. <laughs> we're trying to work with what we've got. Okay, so, oh, I guess you could run the tape gun, but I'm gonna use glue, because I'm a wet glue girl. Do however you like. I'm gonna put my wet glue down. And I'm going to press that down, Ooh, press that down really well. Use my flat side of my bone folder to burnish that down. And then I'm going to fold this tab back against the seam. Okay. Now. Next, we're going to cut this tab half an inch. Okay. This piece, hold on to it in case you want to use it for something else, but that's our first tab. Okay. Make sure you're still glued on nice and straight. Good. Okay. So now that we've cut our first tab, really make sure that's on there. We're gonna fold this back. We're gonna do it again. We're gonna measure a quarter of an inch. Plus one pencil, quarter of an inch. And we're gonna keep doing this um, over and over again, and that's really all there is to this. Okay, quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch. I gotta find my ruler, guys. I don't know what happened to it. I had a smaller version of this ruler and it has vanished. Now, I don't want to blame anybody else in my house, <laughs> but I have this very distinct feeling that someone, maybe the same person who uh, took my cardstock out, uh, I think they used it and didn't put it back and now it's gone forever. Fold back on the crease and burnish. I'm hoping it turns back up. I need a smaller ruler and I really don't want to go buy another one when I know I have one in the house. Okay, we're gonna glue. Now you see your gusset's bigger, right? Here, it's not bigger here because we only made it a quarter of an inch, but you've got 
these bigger decks. So as remember, it's gonna get wider and wider. We were, if building this from scratch, you would make the, uh, instead, after doing this a quarter inch, you would do this three quarters of an inch so that you could glue the quarter inch one and then you'd have two quarter inches on the side. Okay, and again, I'm not the best at describing how to build things sometimes like this, but um, you can see a tutorial on Follow the Paper Trail of how to do this, okay? I'm gonna glue that down. Burnish. There we go. Get this inside the cutter. Cut a half an inch again. Oh, it came up. Maybe I should cut it first. Maybe you should cut it first, guys. After you make your thing. Okay. Oh, no. There we go. Yeah, cut first, then glue, because it's not... I don't know what I did. I made a mess. It came up. Okay. All right. Glue that down again. Now, we are not going to cut this last piece just yet, because it's going to get glued to the back of the book. So, I mean, it's not really necessary to cut it down. Um, but if you feel like it's just a little too big, maybe cut it down a little bit. But you don't want to cut it down too much, because this is what... This whole part is going to anchor this part from the seam to here is going to anchor this whole binding to your, um, to your book. Okay. And all we're really doing by making a, a binding with gussets like this is ensuring that once we put those pages on that we have a little bit of space. Cause you could have glued this, this deck, um, this, uh, uh, binding right to your book, but your pages would not have enough space because we did make them kind of thick, you need that extra, you know, quarter of an inch on each side for the page to really sit down so you'll have a nice flat uh, surface. Okay, so we're gonna come back this way. We're gonna mark a quarter of an inch again. Oh, what do I do? Quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. That My last video was a little bit dark, I feel. Okay. I'm hoping it's not too blown out now. I'm going to score. Before we glue it down, we're going to cut that half inch off again. Yeah, it's easier this way, guys. It is before you glue it down to just, uh, you really shouldn't have too much to cut off um, at this point. Okay. Score. Oh, I'll push it backwards and score. I mean, that score. Listen to me, burnish. Okay, I'm gonna glue this down. Right in there. I'm gonna zoom out a little, just a little bit. Okay. Just I feel like I'm a little close and I hope you're getting everything. I don't want you to miss anything. back and do it. Okay, this is the last time we're going to do this again. So now your big part is on this side. All your little parts are here. Okay, you're going to measure this one now. Quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch. Score. We're gonna cut it down. Oops, <laughs> I'm making so much noise today. 
I'm glad nobody's home. I got I got let go from work early today because it wasn't terribly busy, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I was like, let me get this done before my vacation. I'm so excited for my trip, guys. I really am. At first, I was like, oh, I don't want to go because it's you know it's like a working trip. I mean, it's family wedding, but I'm shooting it, um, doing for the photography. So I was like, oh, it's gonna be so much work. But now, now as the date's approaching, I'm like, yay! Okay, this is the last time we're gonna fold this back, but there's nothing to glue down. Okay, we're just gonna burnish this. Okay, so now you have this large piece on the right. One, two, three, four, five tabs. Okay, at this point, um, we're pretty much re we're ready to assemble this and put this in the book. If you feel confused, go back, watch it again. Um, but if you moved at the same pace as I did, you know, you can just keep going um, and we're gonna assemble this. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is at the top and the bottom of this, we're gonna cut um, at an angle to make sure that our page goes on nicely. So you just wanna take and just go right in here, just like this. Oh, am I too close? There we go. And you're just gonna cut that right at an angle, just like that. You're gonna do that for all the tabs. And again, this just makes it so it's easier to adhere the pages um, to the book without the tops and bottoms of this sticking out of the pages. All right, now we made three pages, but we have five tabs. And that's because this is the part where you can decide what else you want to add to your book. You can make another pocket of some kind. You can make um, a plain page. You can make some kind of uh, waterfall page if you wanted to. Um, you could do really whatever you want to add to those extra two tabs. I um, didn't design anything um, right now. I haven't decided if I'm going to do a tab with um, pattern paper yet or something, not a tab, but design something with pattern paper yet. Um, uh, or if I'm just gonna add like a, a pocket or some kind of like pre-made uh, manila envelope or something. Um, but I would say, you know, if you have something else lying around, this is a great opportunity to add to these two, because you have one page then that we made and then a tab and then a page and a tab and a page. So, I mean, a lot of people, what they did with the Tim Holtz folio was like, say they had, let's find something. Let's find a tchotchke, what do I have? What do I have? Say you have a, uh, a picture. Here we go. Say you have a picture and, or a ticket stub or something, and you don't necessarily want to like glue it down, like, you know, on a page on a page, you can just stick it down to the tab like this and just stick things to the tab so that you have like that are pages and then something glued to the tab. A lot of people did that. That's a lot of what I saw in tutorials. Um, for me, that wasn't something that I really wanted to do, but I'm leaving myself the flexibility that if I like it, then that's what I'll do. Um, yeah. So next we are going to, uh, attach this to the back of our book. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's, let's give ourselves one more quarter of an inch because, um, if you want to add anything to this back page, you're going to need a little bit more space. Okay. So one more quarter of an inch, one more quarter of an inch on the other side. The reason I do it on both sides is because I want to make sure I line it up and it's nice and straight. I don't want to take chances that, I mean, this is probably not sewn perfectly straight. I'm sure it's going through some like really quick fact, you know, when people sitting down in a factory making these things, um, and they're not quite so careful as to make sure that they're perfectly straight. Okay. So we're going to give ourselves that quarter of an inch score, fold it back this way towards your tabs. You know, sometimes I change my mind while I'm doing things, guys. I hope that doesn't bother any of you. I know it can be frustrating for some people, but you know, I think that's part of working on a project like this is sometimes there are things you can plan and some things you just need to do organically. And I think, you know, when you find yourself in a bind, you got to be able to move on your feet. Okay. So now your spine will go like this um, and fold up nicely um, and stand up as you use your book. So you may even want to, you know, score this because this last score line is just the right. I mean, we're not really going anywhere past that last score line. So you should have plenty of space to, um, to, uh, you can see it right in there. The first score line. If you score it there, the book will stand up nice. Okay. So we're going to glue this part of the book down. 
and this set this this one all the way on the left is the one that you're going to get really close to here okay right I'm like, yeah, but let me just make sure. Yeah, the last one. Okay, I'm going to glue the back of this. Um, if you're going to use um, any kind of uh, tape like this, use a wider tape than this skinny stuff. I mean, use the big wide one uh, of score tape or use the red line tape to be certain that it's going to really be down there. But I'm going to use my glue. Again, I'm a big wet glue person. I think I say it every single time I do something. Um, the only thing about <laughs> wet glue is when it is down. Woo, Nelly, it's down there. Especially if you got that fast dry stuff. I don't buy the fast dry because I'm not good with that. Take this, the, the last edge that we just made and you're going to go just inside that tab. Okay, get it real close. But it doesn't have to be like do you see how I'm not like exactly on it? You want to be just inside it. Okay, I mean you can get really close. Just don't be like right up on it. Because it you won't you won't be able to use your pages. Wow. I know I say this every single time. <laughs> okay, there we go. Alright. If you're having a hard time with this, maybe you um can use some uh washi tape to tape it down or um, weigh it down with something heavier like this just to get the just to get the tabs out of the way because I know they're like still they're still really floppy okay we're gonna burnish this down and now we are going to install our pages so you have a page and the page opens up on the left hand side like this there's bottom and there's two open spots at the top. And I know it looks gross, but you know what? Once we close this, no one's going to see. All right. And the gussets are on the side. The little uh, pieces are on the side. We are going to take our glue and run it along both edges. And then we're going to get this right up almost all the way, almost all the way into the corner of that tab. Okay. Again, you can use your score tape, your red line tape, whatever kind of wet glue, whatever you like. Okay. Just if you're using the wet glue and the tape, be aware that you're losing a little tiny bit of your page. Uh, ooh, take your pocket tape. Oh my God. Take this. I almost forgot before you start gluing. Take this out of the pocket in the front or you're going to glue it right in. Right, right up on the edge. You really, really want that glue right at the edge because you don't want to lose too much of your pocket. Okay. We're going to get right up in here. Oh, just take both out. <laughs> take all of your little, your little pages out because it's impossible to get pages on with all the stuff inside. Okay. This is, I'm just going to show you. You're going to take this back tab. We'll call that tab number five. We'll say the top one's one and the back one's five. Start with tab number five. Get it right at the bottom there. Okay. Almost all the way onto the into the corner of the tab. Turn it over. Okay. Oh, oh. Made a mess. It's because I'm trying to like show you guys, but I can always show you after I've done it because you'll, you'll probably rewind anyway. There we go. Okay, right up against there. Let me turn our page over. I mean, you really don't want it to be completely against. You really want to ha make sure that you have a little bit of space. And I'll show you in just a second what that looks like. Just make sure I've got this down really nicely. Where's my, my bone folder? You might want to wait till you're done putting in all the pages to put your envelopes back in. Okay. All right. So you can see there, I'm not all the way into that that 
corner of that tab. I've given myself just a little bit of spit. Can you see? Oh my gosh, that reflection is awful. You can see right there. It's so minimal. It's like an eighth of an inch, not even, not even. It's so tiny. But that tiny little bit of space is just enough. You can see it's just so small, so minuscule. But that's just enough to make sure that your pages will lie flat. I mean, look at that. I can turn my page really nicely and I'm not worried about it standing straight up like a soldier. Okay, skip tab number four. The next one goes on tab number three and then tab number one. Okay, I'm gonna pause and then I'm gonna show you what that looks like finished. Okay, we're back and all our pages are in. Okay, so now what you're seeing is that the pages all stand up and fill up the book so that when you we're gonna and we're gonna score this in just a second when you turn the score now you have a nice fat book okay as opposed to having this thin flat folio now if you don't like the idea of having a big book like this you are certainly welcome to do however you like and glue the spine right down you would just fold have folded it along the seam with the three tabs to the left and then glued the big part into the back of the book Okay, and it would have been just that simple and all of your pages would be really like tied up against each other so the book doesn't stand up as big. However, what you will find is that you get the part where the edges kind of get bigger and bigger and bigger like, like, how do I, okay. It would have been like this, the book, I'm really bad at this, how do I, okay. The book would look like this as opposed to being like this, okay. Um, so here we go. So you can see now the spine how it stands up by itself, but it's flexible because it's not glued down. And when you open the book, you can push that down and now your pages lay flat. So when it's closed, they stand up like this and then it lays nice and flat because we didn't go right up into those seams. You know, you have this nice flexible hinge that lays back down, okay? And you can see here, you turn your page. Now you have this little tab. You can add whatever you like to it. Turn again. You got another tab. Turn again and you've got the back of the book. Okay, now, at this point, you can choose to glue, oh no, where my pocket go? Oh, you can choose to add this pocket, okay? We have this, oh, this magical leftover piece from when we cut our, um, cut from the other side, right? So we've got this leftover piece. We're gonna measure, whoops, okay. We're gonna measure. We're six and a half. I'm like trying to think of how I'm gonna make this <laughs> while I'm doing this. You're at six and a half. Okay. Now, if you can remember, the problem we have with our plastic pieces is this does not really glue down very well. All right, so what we are going to do is Score a half an inch. Half an inch is gonna get glued down and the other half we're gonna create like a, a little like, we're gonna make a zigzag and then staple and then glue, okay? I know that sounds so much easier when I said it. <laughs> it made so much more sense. Okay. So we're gonna go, we're gonna score this four times at half an inch because now it's an inch wide, this piece that we cut off or it should be at least an inch wide, okay? So every half an inch, we're gonna make a mark. Two. One here. One here, because remember the glue didn't work so well. I mean, you could use red line tape, which is really great. I don't have red line tape, so we're gonna do this instead. Another half an inch. You're gonna score on each of these half inch marks. This made so much more sense in my head when I said I was gonna do this, guys. <laughs> Bear with me if this does not come out right. <laughs> all right, I'm pretty sure. I'm like thinking of all the folds in my head and it should work out. It's one of those things where I'm like, remember the other night when I said I stayed up all night trying to figure out how to put the pages together? I did not so much do this with this hinge piece. Okay. So you take your, your cupped part, okay. You're going to ah, tuck this into here and staple one, two, three, like that, okay? Mm. Yep. Staple it really, really low. I mean, you don't want to lose too much of your pocket, right? And then you can, you're going to cover this up on both sides with, um, with crafting paper, like nice paper, okay? but you just want to really make sure that that's, that's on there. 
I lost that part of my pocket. <laughs> Straight? Okay. All right. So that's stapled. And then you have this little tab in the back here. Okay. <laughs> I said fold it like a U and I'm still wrong. Okay, fold this back. So now this is, this is the back side of your, here's the front side. Here's the back side. It should look like this. Mm -hmm. Can I get it? <laughs> Straight, there we go. Okay. It should look like a little L. So it's a V and then a line. So let's take this out. Okay. You just push it right back through the other side. Oh my gosh. I apologize. I did this wrong. You're going to make a piece that's one inch wide by six and a half. You think I could have got this right the first time? Fold it in half. I just realized that when I put it facing downwards, it wasn't gonna, um, you wouldn't be able to tip the, the thing forward. Okay. Cut it down to six and a half. <laughs> Again, sometimes you make things on the fly. You glue this to the inside of the glue off. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna put a little annotation and <laughs> we're gonna get this right so that you don't get to this part and go, I just glued it down, Leah, you're killing me. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I should have planned this out better. This is the worst tutorial ever. I'm gonna get notes like, this was the worst tutorial I've ever seen. Okay, take your V. Okay. There we go. Glue this into here. Yes, so now you've got a hinge there. <laughs> Why couldn't I get this right the first time? Okay. All right. This is embarrassing. I'm so sorry. There's nothing endearing about what I just did. This is not even, I don't find it funny. I find it embarrassing. I hope I'm not. Not making too much of a mess. Okay, there we go. Now you can glue this down and this will flat this will go down. Glue that shut. I should have left that fourth little zigzag. <laughs> no, no, it wouldn't have worked. Maybe it would have. Whatever. No, it wouldn't have. Yes, I would have. <laughs> Should have left the fourth stinking zigzag. Okay. This is right now. Okay. Now you glue this part. Here. And again. Really, really close to that edge, but not quite on it. Center it. <laughs> this is why it's important to be humble, guys, because <laughs> when you make a mistakes, you want to be people to be like, ah, at least she acknowledges them. Or at least I can try and edit them out, but I probably won't. <laughs> okay. Now we're glued in. You should have plenty of space this way. And this is why I added that extra gusset before so that you have room for the page to really fit and you have room for your pocket also. So you see how nicely that lays? It would have it would have been really kind of awkward. I think you can look, you can see this way. You have space for the pocket in there. Just like how we did here and you gave yourself a little bit of space. This gives us a little bit of space. Okay. Now the pocket will flip down. Yay. Okay. But now we need to punch a hole. Let's see if this will go. Okay. You just take a sharp tool. You can take a nail, you can take a, if you have a long um, punch, this is a good time for it. I have a nail. <laughs> I'm like, where'd you go to, Leah? I, I have a nail, but I had to find it. Okay. 
I'm gonna go in through here. I'm just carefully gonna make a little mark like that. If you have a little awl, that's a great tool because the nail's really kind of not <laughs> as safe as it probably should be, but there we go. All right, you take this, you go back through the back side here, and you can put that right back in and there's no interference. And when you glue your uh, decorative paper here, you're gonna wanna also do that again, okay? So that is everything that we were gonna do today. We made our hinge, our stack the deck binding hinge there. We um, attached the pages to it and we added this pocket at the back. So we are really super close to the end of this, guys. Um, what are we left with? We need to do something with these and we need to make a closure for this part of the book. And, uh, and that's gonna be it. Oh, we gotta bend the page. I said we'd bend the page. Okay. You wanna go to the last score mark. Okay, I don't know if you can see. Am I too bright? This last score mark all the way to the right on the first one. Gosh, finding it is a lot harder. It should be right up against where you're, uh... Okay, you just use a tool, not the pointy end. <laughs> And you're just gonna push up against that. And we're just gonna get that going nice and easy. You don't wanna force it too hard, okay? And then you're gonna push back just to get that going just a little bit. Go slow, guys, don't go fast. You'll, uh, you'll tear it, okay? And I'm just, all I'm doing is pushing down against the table, put a little pressure and rocking it forward, rocking it forward, just a little bit, not too hard. Okay, also we don't want to smush our pages. Okay, that's on the one side now. And you see how nicely that just accommodates our hinge and our pages. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with the short end. I'm gonna get it right up in here with our tool and we're just gonna bend right against it. We're just gonna push just a little bit. And then we do it again, just a little bit. Cause again, this is especially on these shorter sides guys. It's a little bit more sensitive and it's easier to ruin the page, okay? So you just, I mean the uh, the cover. So you just really want to go slow with this. Don't put too much pressure in one spot because you'll 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 break a, this and you'll ruin it, or you'll dent it and ruin it. Okay, really slowly, just right up in there, just right where the tool. I'm just to the side of where the tool is, and I'm just going real, real gentle, real gentle. Okay, don't go onto the round part, the rounded part where because it's, it's the back side. You want to go. Um, to the outside of where the page is gonna, like the, the outside of the page. That way you know you're going right into the crease, okay? And then once you've really got that going, okay, just like the other side, we're just gonna hold our page. Make sure you get like the whole thing, like get your thumbs across here like this, all the way, the pad of your thumb against it, and the, and the actual thumb, and then just press down gently, gently. Just press down gently and rock a little bit. Just a little bit. Push down and rock. Just a little bit. Just wiggle, just a little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Okay, again, we don't wanna we don't wanna tear this, okay? Because this is sensitive. And you can see this is this has already been formed by being, you know, we keep opening and closing it, opening and closing it. Okay. And now that stands up. Now you're gonna do the edge, the top and the bottom. Okay, right at those wide spots. Okay, it's so the same thing, just real gentle. Get this tool right up against that, the outside of that seam. Oh, you can see I was a little bit rough with mine. I just wanna, oop, really gently. Just get that going right in there, right in there. Yep, okay, now I got it. Take my hands and I'm just gonna bounce it a little bit. Okay, just wiggle, wiggle gently. Oh, this one didn't come out so good. But you can really get your hands like right up in there and I think I can crease. It wasn't cre scored so good on this last one. And I tore, I tore a little bit, but as you press down against the table, and it sounds like I'm doing a lot of pressing, guys. I'm pressing really gently. My desk is just, it wobbles a lot. So, cause this is a pull, it's a pull out drawer. So it's just making a lot of noise. Your desk probably won't make this much noise. Okay. 
just goes against here like that. Last time, last side. Just really gently get your thumb under there, okay, to support the page. Oh, this one went really nicely. You just really slowly, guys, don't don't force it. Don't force it too hard. Again, we don't want to tear the page. And I'm not I'm not turning I'm not turning the page down this way. I'm pushing down and I'm wiggling it just a little bit in place. I'm not forcing the page down. Okay, because again, we want to be gentle and we want to break the fibers and the paper up just a little bit. And I think that's it. That's the whole shebang, guys. We just have a little bit more to do. And we're finished. And then you're, so you can see, I mean, it's a big book. It's a little thick, you know, <laughs> it stands up a little bit, but we're gonna make something that goes on this tab over this way to cover uh, into the book a little bit, for, cover the book a little bit further. Cause now that it's open, you can see it's a little like, rrr, rrr. so we're gonna make a, we're gonna make that tab bigger. Okay, in our next tutorial. And I'm gonna figure out what we're gonna do with this little bit here, how we're gonna decorate it, okay? Cause I don't know. Actually, you know what, guys? I think we're just gonna leave that plain because I think we're out of space. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna leave that for decorating. So next time, what are we up to? Next time we, uh, we're gonna make the tab. We're gonna make the tab extension and then we're gonna talk about um, decorating and those two extra tabs on your hinge. Okay, that's it for this week. And uh, well, actually, no, that's it for this edition. Hopefully I can get something else to you by this week because I go on vacation soon and I want to have this book done before I go. So when I come home, we're ready to do some decorating videos. Okay. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye.